Hey, my name is Dean Lamb. I play in the death metal band Arch Spire, and this is Lamb's Chops, the show where I take user submitted riffs and I try to make them better. Let's check out the first submission. All right, uh, first up we have uh, Daniel Batista. Hey, my name is Daniel, uh, 22 years old, been playing since 17. I did this recording when I started to listen to more black metal, trying to emulate it, basically ripping off dissection. I've got more blatant ripoffs, so I mean, ripping off bands is totally fine, by the way. I mean, as long as you're not playing a note for note, it's like, whatever. I couldn't tap out the solo properly, but it's basically E for G and dominant root and start, goes down something, something, fiddle around E, F goes to B, okay? I don't remember how to play exactly. Sounds great. Daniel Batista, let's check out your riff. It has the amazing title of Untitled, and then in brackets, three. <laughs> All right, I think that we get the idea. Okay, so Daniel Batista, what I can say about the riff is that yes, you need something else. You're saying there's a solo over top. Let's check out the tab real quick. <laughs> Okay, that sounds kind of cool. I think the riff has some merit to it. It's just a bit empty sounding. It's a bit repetitive. But I think that there's some cool stuff in there. Harmonizing this main riff at some point in the recording sounded a lot like Mastodon, which I really like. Maybe harmonizing the fifths or something. Uh, it sounded pretty cool. Okay, let's check out the riff. <laughs> That's so definitely a Mastodon kind of riff. I would say adding some variation there would be good at a certain point. Playing it a few times in a row like you have here sounds okay. <laughs> Right about there, I want to hear something different. Not necessarily a different riff, just like something about it to sort of change a little bit. Let's check out the part after. So you have like this descending kind of thing that goes down back towards the beginning of the riff. And that gives the audience sort of like the impression that, hey, we're going back down there and you know what to expect. It's cool, um, but you also want to play with the audience's expectations a little bit. You don't want to have the, just the most obvious thing. Playing this riff and then we play this other riff and then you go back and forth between a and b i'd like a c section or a d section in there at some point not like that Okay, so what I did there, I, I basically took your picked thing in between that main sort of power chord riff slidey kind of guy, and I'm, I'm doing just like a strummed version of it that changes every time. Something like that. Or... I would say that that is a little bit too obvious for me. You know exactly where we're going to go. Yeah, not a lot of expectation broken there. You don't want to go too far in breaking the expectations necessarily, but let's like, you know, give the listener some credit. They're able to figure out something on their own. They're able to figure out a small time signature change. They're able to figure out a slight variation in the riffs. Uh, a great tool I use is taking... Uh, an A and a B section, repeating it A and B, and then the second time the B section is a bar of 6-4, something a bit different for the audience to hear. So let's say, it, just for example. Okay, so I lengthen that by two quarter notes. Okay, so now we have something a little bit more refreshing every time you hear it. The da 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 is a half decent idea, but the way that you get there, let's make that a little bit more interesting. Play with the audience's expectation of exactly what's gonna go on here. This is like a verse kind of riff, in my opinion. You have a lot more melody here with this chorus. Even though some of it is dissonant. I like that melody a lot. I think it sounds cool. That's the stronger part. And that's a really cool basis for some sort of lead thing. Something 
something like that. I'm, I'm just sort of, you know, spitballing ideas here. You could also think about moving one of these up an octave and having it double tracked. If you were to move that up an octave, it might look like... Uh... And you can even take those into full chords. Um, so... Something like that might help bring the melody out. Maybe not exactly those notes, but separating the octaves so that you get a bit more clarity out of the chords. Uh, otherwise, yeah, I mean, I think it sounds pretty cool. So thank you so much, Daniel, for your submission. This episode of Lamb's Chops is brought to you by Riff Hard, the world's best online school for metal guitarists. Join the online school and take virtual classes from guitarists like John Brown, Wes Hauk, and myself, where we all share our unique perspective on a ton of different musical topics. You'll also get instant access to over 100 tutorials and our exclusive members-only group full of other metal guitarists pushing each other to improve. So if you're a metal guitarist who's ready to take it to the next level, click the link below and we'll see you there. Uh, we are going to Ahmed. Oh, hey, Dean. Username Blink Epitaph. Hello. I really enjoyed the first episode of this new series, and I figured I'd give, uh, send an idea of my own. Oh, it's very good. I haven't been writing a lot of material lately, but I'm haunted by this riff. Written myself into a corner. Okay. Uh, not sure where else I could take it. Starts on bar 33. If you have any thoughts, I appreciate it. Okay, bar 33. <laughs> I, I really like that chord progression. <laughs> solo riff give me a break yeah i mean I, th I think this is an easy fix change the drums after two repetitions and then bring a solo and, and keep going with this riff am i playing that right yeah, that sounds cool Okay, so I, I might change that eighth fret note here. Just, it sounds a bit more exotic, uh, but now that I'm thinking about it, this is Phrygian dominant, so. Yeah, I mean, you'll get a way more obvious kind of sound if you do this. Especially with that Phrygian dominant down to the one. Hey, I mean, that's your classical kind of functioning dominant chord in minor key. I mean, you know, it's, it's great. That might be kind of cool, ascending and descending differently. So let's say we start with your kind of more obvious kind of one, like this. So uh, Phrygian dominant with your five instead. Yeah, it sort of it sort of gives you a little bit different of an expectation on the way down. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, what you could do is experiment with some different variations there. Just would be kind of cool to have a little bit less of an obvious chord to go back to. Um. Oh, I'm doing um, chronic median down one major third, doing another minor chord here, F. So F minor into a diminished chord of some kind. It's just another way to get back into that main chord there. I would say, in my opinion, scrap the middle part and do a solo over this, because it's like a solo riff. Uh, getting out of this uh, riff, I don't know what we have after that, but nothing. Okay, um, that's that's cool. This could be an outro riff. I mean, this this could be like a fade out outro riff. That might be cool. I know that uh, our producer, Dave Otero, always says, if you have too many fade out riffs on an album, that means you don't have enough ideas for endings. But doing a fade out is okay to do sometimes. So if you want to do it, uh, by all means. Yeah, very cool riff. So hopefully I gave you some ideas. Uh, thank you so much, guys, for 
joining me on this video. The email for the submissions is in the description of the video. So please uh, send over your riffs. What I'm looking for is riffs that you're having a tough time fitting in somewhere, making them work, coming into them, coming out of them, something, something. That's what I'm looking for. So if you have questions or if you have a riff that you want to work on, please send it to submissions at deanlam.com and I might see you in the next video. Thanks. See you next time.